Well, good evening, friends, and welcome to the Revive Our Hearts Family Chat. I'm Dana Gresh. Hi, Dana, and I'm Nancy DeMoss Wagamuth. And Dana, it looks like you have got some Christmas stuff going there in your living room. So oh, our I, living room. Yeah, it's 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 the elves were here. All one of the joy piece. Yeah, me too. That was a gift from my daughter-in-law. I love it too. You're Christmassy too there. You got the little candle lit. You're all your whole house decked out. You know, we do, but we almost didn't because Robert and I are hunkered down at home uh, in kind of lockdown through the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas due to his health. And so I really debated, should we take out the time and effort to decorate for Christmas? And you know, I thought about it. And even though we're not able to have people in our home right now, I said, you know, for Robert and me together with Jesus during this time, we just want it to be a place where we're um, celebrating him and the lights point us to him. And so we went all out and it's, we're so enjoying it. It's just such a sweet season and always Christmas music playing in the background. And um, so, yeah. It's very soothing. I decided that uh, my Christmas decorations are going up and then at the end of the month, the bulbs are coming off and the, the decorations off the tree. We're going to have January trees and then I'm going to put hearts on and they're going to be Valentine's trees. <laughs> Perfect. It's too much work to do it another way, but right now it's Christmas. So I guess this is our Revive Our Hearts Christmas family chat. Yeah, I guess it is. Although I got to say, I'm still full of Thanksgiving because that's what I'm feeling as we gather together tonight. Just such gratitude for our friends who've joined us, for their partnership, for your partnership. Um, uh, from all over, we've got all over the United States and other, some other countries joining us tonight. And uh, what you mean to us is our ministry partners, our monthly partners. And uh, so thank you for joining us. And Dana, I'm grateful for your partnership. We're just past the year long mark where you've been co-hosting yeah. Revival Hearts and what a sweet gift and blessing you've been to this ministry. Uh, and then we've got a few radio station partners who are with us tonight thankful for the hundreds of them. Um, so it's a sweet night to give thanks to the Lord for our friends and for what he's doing through this, his ministry. Yeah, we really just want to spend a few minutes expressing our gratitude for all the ways the Lord is using Revive Our Hearts in the lives of women around the world. We want you to hear how God is using your partnership because we hear the stories every day, but you don't get to hear how your friendship and your partnership is working on behalf of the gospel. And we want to showcase some ministry opportunities we're moving towards for the year 2021. 2021, that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah. Ready for 2020 to be done, right? Yes. But yes, let me just say I've looked forward so to spending time with um, you friends who've joined us because you are more than ministry partners, your family. And over the Thanksgiving holiday, I had a chance to send some texts and make a few calls to just people that the Lord put on my heart who have been um, partners with this ministry. And I had that thought throughout the week. You are family. You really are a part of our family. We are so, so grateful for you. And your support of this ministry is producing fruit. We, and again, as Dana said, we get to see those uh, and hear those stories all the time. I've got to just start, Dana, by sharing one that came into my inbox just a few days ago. And this just so blessed me. I went right away and read it to Robert, and I want to share it uh, with our friends tonight. This lady said, I used to listen on my car radio to Revive Our Hearts every day back in 2004, 2004 and 2005 but it was out of desperation. And she, she started by saying, I just got an email from Revive Our Hearts. I have no idea where it came from or how it, I got it because she said, we've not been connected for years. And then she said, I used to listen to Revive Our Hearts daily. She said, at that time, this is back in the early 2000s, after only four years of marriage, I cheated on my husband. And then she said, this follower of Jesus raised in the church, found herself at age 24 and 25, feeling like a failure and even having suicidal thoughts. She said, I love my parents and my childhood church, but the lesson of grace wasn't taught so well. She said, I remember hearing you every day tell listeners that the enemy loves to tell women lies and prey on their most vulnerable thoughts and emotions. And she said, I also remember the Lord teaching me grace through you. She says, I found rest in your radio show. 
your voice and your words from God were so healing to my broken heart. You helped me to not feel alone in my temptation and sin. And she says, my amazing husband forgave me. And we began to work even harder at our relationship. We asked an older couple in our church to be our mentors. We had no idea that they had an older couple in their lives who had passed the torch to them and that one day they would pass it on to us as well. This was the beginning of a marriage ministry that my husband and I are still passionate about to this day. And she said, last month, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. We have two amazing children and couldn't be more grateful for the life God has given us. Today is Thanksgiving, well, when she wrote this, and we're going to start the wall of gratitude with our kids, something that Robert and I have been doing throughout uh, this season that he's been going through chemo. She said, this is a great idea and I'm so thankful I opened my email to see your video this morning. I'm also now thankful that I can join in prayer for your husband and his treatment. So Dana, I've been, I'm thinking as I've read this now a few times, what if partners hadn't supported this ministry? We hadn't been able to be with our, uh, to connect with our station partners. We hadn't been able to be there 15, 16 years ago uh, sharing this message. And this 24, 25 year old young 20 um, something woman who could be just a statistic, another marriage blown up, and all the family members that would have been, you know, devastated by that how different would her story be if God had not raised up Revive Our Hearts and put it in her life at such a time? And, and I, I told our team yesterday, this week on a prayer call we had, I said, as the program's going out today, there's some woman in a desperate marriage somewhere who is listening and it, her, she's hanging by, her marriage is hanging by a thread. But 15 years from now, we're going to hear the story of how God intervened in her life because this ministry was going on. So um, praise God. This I love that. what all this is about. I love hearing stories like that. And I've been really looking forward to this night for that reason, because we're going to just download ourselves with stories of hope and healing and transformation. And we really need that at the end of 2020. I don't know about you, but I've found myself eagerly anticipating the Christmas season. I started decorating weeks ago, like September. Why? I think I, like many of us, are just experiencing a collective ache to be reminded of God's power and his presence in our lives. And that's why celebrating the Savior's arrival this year is going to be so special. It reminds us that he is in control, even though the world is so broken. If you've been experiencing that and aware of that, and seeing it all around you, you're in the right place tonight because I believe you're going to leave this family chat encouraged and refreshed. In the next hour or so, we're going to share some more behind the scenes updates from the Revive Our Hearts team. We want to infuse our hearts with purpose to point this lost world to our saviors, Savior. And um, we're going to have some brief updates that'll include one announcement that you are going to be the first to know about. I don't even know very much about it. I can't wait to hear. We're going to hear some sweet testimonies that will fill us with hope. And we're even going to open the word briefly as we think about the mission and ministry of Revive Our Hearts. I am so excited. I know it's going to minister to your heart. And we're going to end the evening by praying together for God to continue to work and to move through our partnership by using Revive Our Hearts to help women around the world experience freedom and fullness and fruitfulness in Christ. So we want to pray together before we part tonight. Yeah. And to that end, I want you to know that we love praying for you. We have so many prayer warriors that love lifting you up specifically. And to that end, our team is watching the comments and we'd like to know how can we pray for you specifically as this year ends? Would you mind sharing that in the comments? What special needs do you have right now? We wanna make sure that we lift you up. Well, Nancy, let's get started. And can I make a request? I'd like to start with the updates because I'm pretty excited about them. Absolutely, yeah, Dana, thank you so much. And I wanna invite Janine Nelson to join us. Janine's been a friend for a number of years. Uh, she, uh, she and Robert knew each other professionally for many years. She's a senior leader at Revive Our Hearts. She oversees communications and development. And that doesn't begin to describe all that she does. I sent Janine um, an email or text last night. Um, I think she'd already gone to bed. Janine, maybe, I don't think you saw it till this morning, but it was late last night and said, I can't imagine doing what we're doing today without 
you in this picture and the, the lift that you brought to so many areas of this ministry. So um, I love working with you, serving with you, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight on our family chat. Thanks, Nancy. It's great to be here. It's my privilege to um, join you and Dana and the rest of our team on this call. If we were doing a grounded episode right now, I think we might call this the good news segment, although a lot of this is going to be good news tonight. But two things I want to start out with is just acknowledging a couple of milestones that we celebrated this last fall. Um, the first one was our 20th anniversary as a ministry. That was on September 3, which also happens to be your birthday, Nancy. Well, let um, me just, I'm not a math major here, but we started our 20th year. Thank so you. We started our 20th year. So we're in our 20th year right yeah. now. Yes, yes, yes. We started our 20th year. And I think there might be some old photos that we can put up. Just a little trip down memory. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thank I'm you much. This. Yes, yes. So Nancy, that looks like you being interviewed by maybe one of our first radio stations. I think that was um, at National Religious Broadcasters, maybe. Okay, that could be. And then the early days, you and Bob Lapine in the studios now, Little Rock, right, was where you started out recording. Yeah, we recorded there for the first, I don't know, five or six years. And Bob Lapine, who served on, who still serves on our advisory board, was a mentor and a coach. And it was really in his heart that God first put, put the burden. He has been for many years the co-host at Family Life Today Ministries. And um, Bob has been a coach. We would record there in that little studio with the um, cinder block walls with a small group of women. And I would teach all day. And then Bob would pull me aside at the end of the day. And he would say, now, here's something. Here's how you can work on this. And here's, um, you know, good job on this. And here's a way to improve that. And it was just such an incredible gift to have him involved. Um, he sat through every recording we did for those first few years mm -hmm. and has been such a gift to this ministry. What an investment. That's that's wonderful. And that um, led us to then another milestone that we celebrated in October, which was our 5,000th program. And I remember, Nancy, when our team was anticipating that milestone, you said, no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> 5,000 <laughs> programs. So um, and that means it's not just the work I've done, but a whole team of people right. editing and right. producing and writing um, and marketing and and station um, managers that, you know, just what a partnership it's been to produce those 5,000 programs, which is a lot of ministry going into the hearts of women around the world now. Yeah, that's right. So we celebrate the past and we see God's faithfulness through the years and we're starting new things as he's bringing opportunities our way. One of those things that we started in September um, was Revive Our Hearts weekend program. And um, Dana is, is helping lead the way on that and hosting that program. But the weekend program is, is kind of the best of the week. And uh, we're excited to be um, having partnership with a lot of our radio stations that air on Saturday or Sunday, uh, that program. And what a, what a great way to meet new listeners that might not um, hear us during the weekday. And so that was an exciting mile marker for us, too. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit as uh, we'll be having the ROH weekend program join our new podcast family. So there's a little spoiler alert of what we'll update you on um, in just a few minutes. So um, that's pretty exciting. And um, another thing that happened in 2020, we can't um, complete our update without hearing about Grounded. Yay! So, yes, I'm going to invite, it. yep, I'm going to invite Erin Davis to, to join us. The Grounded podcast was something we launched in response to the pandemic, and um, Aaron, it's so great to be serving with you. Aaron and I work very closely together, and Aaron, you are um, joining us on behalf of the whole team of Grounded co-hosts. Um, Aaron is our content manager at Reviver Hearts, for those of you who don't know, and she also hosts the Women of the Bible podcast, and she has just been a dear, dear friend to me as we've been serving together. So Erin, welcome to the podcast, the family chat tonight. We'd love to get uh, in the I'm so glad um, to be here. This yeah. is fun. It feels like a Monday morning, Erin. It does. It's like the <laughs> nighttime version of Grounded. So it's fun. Yeah, exactly. Hey, for those who don't know about Grounded, I don't know how they can, but how did it get started? Oh, I, if you don't know, I want, I'm so excited that you get to hear this because it's very exciting. But a group of us gathered in a virtual room a lot like this in March as the words COVID and pandemic and coronavirus were just starting to stream into our collective consciousness. 
this does that seem like it was a long time ago and we just knew we needed to respond and so nancy had this idea she said what if we have this show and what if dana and aaron hosted and and what if we give women hope and perspective and it was like those two words were like you know they fell into the virtual room and we just all grabbed onto them and so grounded was born very quickly i can't remember the timeline but it was just, I think a, matter it was of just days. a few days maybe yeah. four or five days yeah and we don't do things quickly often at revive our hearts we tend to be very strategic and methodical which is wonderful but i think we had such a sense of the urgency here that we put our pedals to the metal and rolled out grounded which started as a daily or a monday through friday uh, video cast and then we have transitioned to being a weekly video cast yeah well let's talk about what we look like nine months later how god's been using it what are some of the stories of god's faithfulness how is he giving women hope and perspective Oh, I love talking about this. And if somebody, might, there might be like a giant hook that comes and pulls me off the screen at some point because I could tell story after story after story, but I won't. I'll let this picture tell a story. If a picture is worth a thousand words, I want you to see a picture of Jeanette. And if you're a Grounded watcher, this picture might be familiar to you. Jeanette was our good news this week on Grounded, but she's a pastor's wife in Idaho. And this photo was taken of her sweet family celebrating their faithfulness in serving at the same church. Her husband's the pastor there for 25 years. So that gives you a picture of the kind of woman Jeanette is. And Jeanette watches every single episode of Grounded. Um, and then she writes down the key nuggets from Grounded in an email. Jeanette's old school. I tried to get her to join us on Grounded and she didn't want to do the Zoom thing, but she writes that all in an email. And she sends it out to all the women in her church. I love that multiplicity that's happening. She had all kinds of stories about women being encouraged through that. But there was one episode in particular where we, the hosts of Grounded, said we said our names and we said the truth we stand on. So I said, my, aim, my name is Erin Davis and the truth I stand on. And I said this first. And she took that idea and ran with it. She emailed that concept to the women in her church and she asked them to respond with the truths that they stand on. She got 45 passages of scripture back from the women in her church. She added her own to the list. That's 46. And then she looked at her calendar and there were 46 days left in 2020. So she just made a commitment. She was going to send a verse a day to the women in that church in Idaho and, you know, I, we've said it here before, and there's memes galore about all of us, you know, just wanting 2020 to be over. But these women have been grounded in God's word through grounded, and they're not just waiting for it to be over. They're like riding off into the sunset with um, just their eyes fixed on Jesus and his yeah. word. And we have lots of stories like that. It's but, like they but, get the hope and perspective and then they pass it on. That's what we want to pass it on. And they know, oh, my neighbor needs to hear this or my sister really needs to hear this. God really is doing something special through Grounded. One other story I'll tell you um, is there is a Grounded prayer team. And I don't even know all these women. I don't even know their names. I think there's about 20 of them. And they meet on Zoom. Uh, twice a month just to pray for grounded and I get reports from those prayer meetings and almost every time I hear we ended up on our knees or on the floor in tears weeping before the Lord asking him to move um, and there's been several episodes where Tom he's on our team would cue us to roll and I just immediately tear up I think it's evidence of the way that God is using grounded in my life to give hope and perspective and I hope in the lives of, I know in the lives of many women now, but I hope in the lives of many, many women in the days to come. You know, really um, behind the scenes, you and I have been talking about, it's our prayer that God would use it as one of many tools to bring revival in the mm -hmm. church, in, in our world. And to that end, it fits pretty well into the Revive Our Hearts lineup. In fact, Janine, let me invite you to come back in while Aaron is here with us because Grounded and Aaron are part of a new podcast family we're launching in 2021, hoping to revive hearts all over the world. Tell us about it. Oh, I would love to. Super excited about this. Um, we're calling it the Revive Our Hearts podcast family. And in January, our plan is to uh, release a whole 
family of podcasts. Our long range vision is to provide podcasts kind of with the ROH stamp of approval and um, to reach every woman um, with a podcast, whether it be um, tweens and young women up to empty nesters or women in their older years, um, women who are new believers. We're really wanting to build um, this family, a kind of a tagline that we're using, and I, this gets me excited, so I love to repeat it. Podcast you love from a family you can trust. Mm -hmm. And so super excited about that. So January 21, um, do you guys have a graphic you can throw up there? This would help me um, just kind of explain what we're doing. So we'll continue with our podcast for Revive Our Hearts Daily and Seeking Him but officially adding now the weekend program that we talked about earlier. So Revive Our Hearts Weekend, um, The Deep Well with Aaron Davis. Um, Woohoo! Yay! I'm excited about that one. I am too. Expect Something Beautiful with Laura Booz. Um, Grounded will officially become an audio podcast, so video podcast or video cast live on every Monday. And then on every Wednesday, you could tune in audio and listen to that conversation as well. And um, Women of the Bible, although it's not a new podcast, in January we'll be uh, releasing the Ruth study. And so January is a busy month, and it's kind of like I feel like I want to send out birth announcements or something. I'm so excited about yeah. it. Yeah, well, we're increasing from three podcasts in our Revive Our Hearts family to seven. So, yeah, the, the parents are outnumbered at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, and Lord willing, um, as the year rolls out and years to come, there'll be additional podcasts that get added to that. So we're inviting you all to spread the word about it and share a podcast that fits the woman next door that you're someone you're trying to reach in your workplace or wherever that may be. But um, we hope to provide a podcast for every woman who wants to deepen their relationship with the Lord. That is so exciting. Thanks, Aaron, for being Aaron, with us. Aaron, 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 Aaron. Um, don't go too far because we might want you back. Our final update is really exciting because it's what you might call breaking news. I'd like to invite Nancy back and also introduce her agent to help us present a new project. <laughs> her agent. Oh, yes. Yeah. I just happen to be here tonight. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah. Her agent, this man who's been in the publishing business for 39 years and is the founder of Wolgamuth and Associates. And just happens to be married to Nancy for five. We're glad you're here, Robert. Almost exactly. Yes, that's right. Well, before you put your literary agent hat on, we'd like a personal update because mm -hmm. we've been praying for you, Robert. You've been you're battling so cancer. Thank you, we've been praying for both of you. So yeah. how are you doing? Well, that's thank you for saying that because Nurse Nancy, when she was a young girl and she had six younger si siblings, she was Nurse Nancy, like everybody got measles or something. And she actually wore a button called that said, Nurse Nancy at your service. Aww. Well, I'll tell you what, we haven't found that button. We've found that heart though. And Aww. she's been unbelievable. She's been, for those of you who have been in the hospital, you know how important it is to have an advocate. And uh, my precious wife, she, she hasn't missed a single meeting, e even if she can't be there physically. I actually FaceTime with the doctor because Nancy is a professional question asker. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I do for a living. That's right. And she has a remarkable memory and she keeps good notes. And so she's been not just my advocate on location, but she's been the great orchestrator. Like tomorrow morning when I get up and pour my coffee, there'll be a little note. Take these pills, take them before you eat something or after you eat something, whatever. She just keeps track of it. It's just unbelievable. So I have to say, it's been a blessing to watch her live out what she's been teaching for decades. Yeah. And we've been in the studio taping, and she'll suddenly say, oh, I got to take this. It's, doc it's one of the doctors. I And we just stop <laughs> in the middle of broadcasting, and Nancy makes an appointment for you. So I'm glad to yeah. be a part of that. And believe me, they know her. They love her. I had treat my chemo treatment number five on Monday, and um, the nurse who has done 15 transfusions, blood transfusions, and most of the five chemo treatments has become our friend. Mm -hmm. We prayed with her. In fact, uh, she initiated each time, it this time. And this time she walked in, she introduced us to her daughter-in-law, brand new marriage. And, and she put her hands out and she said, okay, it's time to pray. So she asked Nancy to pray. She didn't pray, but that's the very kind of thing that we prayed about. The Lord would give us a whole ministry we couldn't have even imagined and wouldn't have chosen, frankly. But the Lord has been so good. I feel good, I'm tired, but not sick. I'm so thankful for that. So 
We have one more, Lord willing, the 21st of December, and then we'll see what happens. So I've, I'm grateful. I'm, this has been an amazing experience and been an awesome thing to see people around the world loving us, supporting us, yeah. reading the Caring Bridge posts that Nancy puts up, getting yeah. updates. It's just been an incredible experience. So and we're I very blessed. One of the sweet things has been just, <clears throat> of course, bonding for us, but also just having a chance in a new season of life to um, demonstrate to ourselves and others the things we've been saying for years about the faithfulness of God, heaven rules. That's a phrase we've said like hundreds of times through this, that these things really are true. I mean, we knew they were true and we'd had other life experiences. Robert had lost a wife to cancer. And um, so it's not the first hard thing we've had in our lives, but it's the first really hard thing we've had in our marriage. Right. And to say that this book we wrote a year ago, you can trust God to write your story because heaven rules. What were we thinking? Well, we're, we were, <laughs> you know what? And things were going swimmingly exactly. well at the yeah. moment. So COVID and cancer just kind of overlapped with each Damn. other this year, but it has been sweet. Yep. Um, and the gratitude wall, some of you have seen pictures of that. That's been, we, we actually went and just stood and looked at it tonight and that they're just Hundreds. hundreds of notes and we said this room's going to look really boring <laughs> we take those down but it, i think it's it's been a pattern of practice of mm -hmm. when things are hard how can we be thankful so this man does not complain uh, it's just robert has been such a treasure and we and and we the report is that the chemo is working oh praise the lord you know so um yeah this has been yeah. god's story well, thank you for an update because we really truly have been praying and it's our joy to do that and um, keep us posted. We're in your corner, friends. Oh, thank you. Um, now, I just I one quick thing, Dan, let me just say that at this time of night, Robert mentioned being tired. It really is true. Just these <laughs> waves of tiredness come over him, particularly as you get into the last treatment. So normally at this time, um, he would not be awake so <laughs> when he slips out in just a few minutes after this conversation it's not because he doesn't want to be with us right. um, thank you but it's, it's like overwhelming <laughs> so thank you honey, for staying up for us my tonight. pleasure for you of course <laughs> well would you mind putting on your agent hat for just a moment robert um because uh, i've heard rumblings about this big breaking news all day but i don't know too much about it in fact um why don't we bring Janine on? Because I hear she does have intel. And while she jumps back in, I want to make a suggestion that this is a really great time for you to tell us what you're thinking as we reveal this new project. Would you drop your comments, encouragement, ideas in the chat? I will be watching for them. Janine? Well, thanks. What an exciting time to jump back in the call to um, share some big news with y'all, with Nancy and Drum roll. Janine. Oh, I, I know. Because oh, I was no. feeling really official. <laughs> it is. It's a big deal. I mean, you know, my heart's racing. <laughs> so uh, let me get the big announcement out, and then I'm going to ask you guys some questions, and you can give us a little bit more background on it. But we have, we, I'm, I'm with Nancy and Robert and all of this. We have recently signed a contract with our friends at Lifeway Christian Resources to um, write in partnership with them a, a Bible, including Nancy's study notes and devotionals and her material um, that will be published. Actually, it's planned right now to come out in 2024. That gives you some kind of an idea of how much it takes for a project like this, but we couldn't be more excited. We couldn't be more humbled and sobered um, by the project. But um, I would love to get from you guys a little bit of background info, and we probably should back up and start from the very beginning. And Nancy, could you kick us off and kind of tell us tell us how this all got started? What's the story? Well, of course, I love the word. That's what we're all about here at Revive Our Hearts. That's what my life is all about since I've been able to read. I've loved reading and studying and meditating on the scripture. But three years ago, a friend gave me this note-taking Bible in the Christian Standard Bible. It's a weightlifter edition here, and it's got wide margin lines. In fact, I think we have a picture that we can put up there of one of the journal pages, and it's just a chance to journal through the Bible. So it took me two years to do that through the Old Testament, took the third year to do the Gospels, and this week I started in the book of Acts. So I'm just about halfway through the New Testament, and it has been with never any thought of publishing 
um, this was this was just for my own walk with the Lord, the soak in the word. And it has been next to marriage to you, honey. Mm. The highlight mm. of my last three years has just been this time meditating, thinking, pondering, taking a passage and turning it over and looking at it from different directions and and just writing how the Lord is speaking to me through that passage. Uh, it's been such a joy. So I just never expected that anything would ever be done with this. Well, but, one of my favorite ad adages is when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm an agent and this is my wife. So I watched this. I watched month after month, Nancy taking these notes, detailed notes, and really her, her, her it, it's a study Bible, but it's really a devotional Bible. It's stream of consciousness. It's really her whole life of studying the word and teaching the word and soaking in the word, all coming into these notes. So I said, sweetheart, that, that needs to be published. See, there I am. <laughs> There's the hammer and here's the nail. And so um, we began a conversation with Lifeway. Lifeway owns the, the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. And uh, and they were looking for a project just like this. And so this has been maybe a six month conversation that as Janine just said, uh, was consummated two weeks ago in a contract. And, and then today we, we did something I've never done. I've been doing this for 40 years. We had a Zoom call with 20 people, uh, four of my colleagues, myself and three colleagues, a uh, number of the Revive Our Hearts staff, and then a number of the LifeWay staff, we spent one hour on the phone talking about the project, sharing scripture, and praying for 30 minutes, uh, just dedicating, launching this huge project. Probably Nancy has written, I'm going to say, 650,000 words so far. And this is handwriting. Handwriting. <laughs> and and it'll, it'll probably be 900 before it's done, something like that. And so we have now a whole editorial team who will process those words, make sure they retain Nancy's voice. That's critical. And then a whole marketing team to launch this. Uh, Lifeway, as you know, is a very well-known, very highly respected publishing company. And they just, they couldn't be more excited about this project. So that's, that's what it's going to be. We're working on the title. It's a devotional Bible. It's a study Bible. We're just not sure what to call it, but that's part of the process that will take place over the next couple of years, and then it will be, it will be an amazing project, really a lifetime work, a life work, for mm -hmm. Nancy to be able to have this Bible. And, and we're looking forward to um, developing a prayer team to yeah. undergird this whole project. And so, if that's something that's on your heart to be mm -hmm. a part of this and to have updates and be able to pray specifically for this project, uh, let us know and we'll make sure we get you connected mm -hmm. with that once it's set up. Yeah. I, I said to the LifeWay team, I think what qualifies people to take on a project like this is when they first hear about it, they say, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. This is God's word. This is, this is sacred. And, and so, that was Nancy's attitude. Sometimes an author might say, oh, great, what a good idea. Nancy was very careful about stepping into this. She, she's a very deliberate kind of person. She does not make decisions very quickly. And so she prays about it, thinks about it. So that's, that's what I said to this team. I said, her, her hesitancy, I think, qualifies her to be the person mm -hmm. to do these notes. Well, the joy Robert that, though, is that... Uh, Lord willing, if this releases on the projected schedule, I'll be, I think, 66 when it releases. <laughs> and after a lifetime, really since I was eight years old, teaching the word of God, um, I just felt like what greater thing could I leave um, for the next generation of women than to do something that would encourage them to get into the word. It's not just that they would know my thoughts. I want to get them to God's word and just kind of be a friend to them and a companion as they walk through the scripture. So to me, it's, it is a daunting responsibility. It's an awesome uh, responsibility, but it's also an incredible joy to oh, think of so a, a, the privilege of doing this. So Amen. So there you have it. You're one of the first to know. Um, Robert and Nancy have both mentioned our commissioning call that we had today. I think we have a quick little photo of the group that um, was brought together today to pray 
from the Walgamuth team, from the Lifeway team, from the Revive Our Hearts team. It really is a sweet coming together um, for a very important project. And Robert, you said something today on the call that stuck with me. You said, you know, Nancy didn't start writing words down thinking this is going to be a project someday or this is going to be published someday, but she was doing it for her own growth and time with the Lord. And um, I'm just so excited to see how God's going to use it in our generation and the next and the next. And and uh, so very exciting. And I'm going to actually invite Aaron to join us. Aaron, you're um, being on our uh, content team and managing that. Her and her team, of course, are going to be working a lot on the project. And you're on the commissioning call today as well. And I wondered, Aaron, if you would just uh, lead us now in a word of prayer, pray over this project and Nancy and our team. I'd be honored to. I'm going to start by reading God's word right back to him, which is always the right place to start. I'm in Isaiah 40. I'm going to read six through eight. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So Jesus, we are so grateful to get to play a part and all of us will play some part in a project that will stand forever um, because your word stands forever and our other efforts um, they matter they're significant but only you and your people and your word will last forever so lord um, it's just with gratitude and joy and some somberness too, Lord, that we celebrate this project that you have given Nancy the opportunity to lead the charge on. And so we need you. We don't need you every hour. We need you every nanosecond of this project. We need you for every word, for every page, for every note, um, because your word tells us to rightly handle your word. And that means it's possible to wrongly handle your word. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would um, prevent that from happening at any step in the process. And we pray for our sister Nancy, that her time with you and your word would be just as sweet as it was before there was a contract on the table or a project, that it would be just as intimate as it's ever been more so, Lord, that it would continue to be about you and her and your word, Lord. And then we pray for that experience to be replicated through generations across geographical borders um, for women to sit with your word and be transformed. We love you. We are honored to serve you. And we pray that you would pour out abundant blessings on this project and that many, many women would love you and your word as a result. Mm -hmm. It's in your holy, holy, holy name I pray. Amen. 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 Wow. I cannot wait to see how God uses this exciting new Bible study tool. You know, that shelf behind me uh, up at the top on the very top, that's where I keep all my favorite Bible concordances and study Bibles by my favorite trusted men of the faith. I'm going to have to dust a spot off next to it for the CSB Bible with devotional study notes from my dear friend. Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth from a lifetime of study. Oh, you know what? Our friends who've joined us tonight are excited too. Can I read a few of their favorite comments in the chat? Um, Rebecca says, tears of joy. Elise says, jumping up and down with excitement. PJ says, what a gift for the body of Christ. And my favorite, Nicole. Wow, so excited. Is it 2024 yet? <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, friends, it's always been and always will be the heart of this ministry to point Jesus to their Bibles, to get them into the word and to get the word into them. And here's where I want to say something important. You're the one that makes that possible. Your faithfulness through the years, months, maybe you've only been a partner with us for weeks. It still enables us to develop resources to keep women reaching for their Bibles. Speaking of reach, we got to talk about the reach of Revive Our Hearts because it's far and it's wide. Uh, maybe you've been around since the beginning. Well, since then, Revive Our Hearts has gone global. And by means of Zoom, we asked several of our international leaders to share some brief glimpses of what God is doing 
the Revive Our Hearts in their part of the world. Check out this sweet video. Hello, my name is Laura Gonzalez de Chavez. I live in Illinois, but our team is spread out in different countries in Mexico, Colombia, Dominican Republic, and in several cities in the US. We serve Spanish speaking women around the world. The Ministry of Ayuda Nuestros Corazones was officially launched in May 2012, and we are excited to see the growth of the ministry in a few years. We saw the Lord at work in an amazing way in our last conference, Mujer Verdadera in Monterrey, Mexico in March, just before the COVID lockdown came. And we saw 6,000 women um, meeting there with us and uh, the Lord did an amazing work among them. And in addition to the women connecting to the translated podcasts and the resources, in the past year, Aviva Nuestros Corazones published a devotional Bible and in this year, we have been encouraging our followers to read along with us the complete Bible. And more than 20,000 women subscribe to the challenge. And it is exciting to see how they connect to the word and among themselves. They have formed groups in WhatsApp. They have formed groups in their churches. And we see even men connected to this challenge and reading the Bible with us. My name is Rieta de Valiers. I live in South Africa, Pretoria. Uh, we start Revival Art South Africa uh, about four and a half years ago. And we have now 10 volunteers uh, that serve all the um, women of South Africa, uh, all the language groups. But at this stage, we um, focus on the translations of, Afri of Afrikaans and Tonga resources. We're really excited about the new Bible studies and short messages we put on YouTube. And in uh, almost two months, we've already got uh, about 113 um, subscribers to the YouTube channel. So we're excited and we just want to say thanks for everyone that make it possible for us in South Africa to be at the hands and feet of Revive Arts. Hello, my name is Javira. I live in Germany. Our team is serving German-speaking women in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. We are very glad to witness how the Lord responded to our prayers of years. We can see how the Holy Spirit is moving among them. Uh, recently, as we translated the cry-out challenge at very short notice, we realized how hungry they are. More than a thousand of them joined us, and during the challenge, we received daily um, note of thankfulness expressing how how happy they were they were to receive the encouragement to pray and now they are joining us to translate to pray and our prayer in our team is for the lord to continue calling women with a heart for revival hello my name is karin i live in belgium we are with a team of 12 women from the Netherlands and Belgium, reaching Dutch-speaking women. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. We started with Facebook one month ago. Revive Our Hearts translated in Dutch is Vernieuw Onze Harten. We are currently working to translate the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge. And now we are very excited how the Lord will use this for his glory. Hello, my name is Marianne Piaget. I live in Western Switzerland and our team is serving French speaking women all around the world. The Husband Encouragement Challenge generated the most response with about 1000 women interacting. We are so excited that our Reve no Care website will be launched shortly for which we are really deeply grateful. A few months ago, I received an email from Céline, who had found my ambassador address on the Revive Our Hearts website. She was so excited to know that someone else in Switzerland was connected to Revive Our Hearts. She wanted to know if there were resources in French that she could share. She had stumbled upon a video of Nancy and Robert's courtship about three, three to four years ago. And as a result, she found Revive Our Hearts. And the, the biblical teachings that she listened to res resonated so much in her heart that with determination and perseverance, she listened faithfully to the podcast with a French-English dictionary at her side. 
She told me that her dictionary was completely worn out, but that her English had much improved. And Celine has become a French ambassador, a prayer warrior, and a cheerleader for the French ministry. Hi, I'm Nikki Lorimer, and I serve the Portuguese-speaking women here in Brazil, along with six others. Um, and we have just been so blessed this year um, as God has allowed us to officially launch Revive Our Hearts here in Brazil. Uh, in May, we started sending out the Seeking Him podcasts uh, daily uh, via WhatsApp. And currently we have around 1,500 people receiving them on WhatsApp alone, um, as well as through some other channels. Uh, in September, we were able to launch our website. And in October, when we did the Cry Out Prayer Challenge, uh, we were just so overwhelmed that we had over 18,000 page views just in that month alone, and so many messages of women so encouraged by this, close to 800 on Instagram. And we've just been so overwhelmed, and we look forward to the coming year, and we're just praying that God may allow us to start recording the longer podcasts. Hello, my name is Sabrina Aslan from San Jose, California. Through a partnership with Revive Our Hearts, I am honored to reach out to Iranian women with ROH resources. In September 2020, through the diligent work of the talented team of ROH, the Farsi Revive Our Hearts website, which is dilhoyamanehiyakon.org, was launched. Since September 30th, we have been able to broadcast Nancy's teaching three times a week, and I'm honored to be Nancy's voice. Since the Farsi podcast have been on air, I have been receiving so many messages showing people's gratitude for receiving those podcasts and that how greatly they have been blessed with them. But I just want to share one of these messages from a secret believer inside Iran. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing these podcasts. Last year, the financial problems and economic series um, crises pushed me to leave the city and live in a far village. And then COVID-19 hits. On top of a jobless situation, I also contracted the virus. I felt so distressed, lonely, and so sick. I am separated from other believers in the father's house. And by father's house, she meant the underground church uh, she used to attend. She continues, in the last 10 days, I was feeling lonely, afraid, sick, hopeless, angry, and bitter to the point that I just wanted to stop my medication and die. But suddenly, in the midst of this chaotic situation, I received these podcasts. Now I know that I should not fret no matter what, and I should boldly look up and courageously look ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. These podcasts proved to me that Jesus is here with me, and even if I die, he will receive me gladly. Thank you. Thank you so much again for blessing me with these podcasts. Praise God. And here you're seeing the 11, the logos of the 11 language groups where we are currently have uh, ministry going on. And eight of those 11 have gotten traction in 2020. So the year that everything stopped or slowed down, it has been the year when God has just done through this ministry remarkable growth and expansion into other parts of the world. And I just thank you. I, I just hope you're encouraged. I know I have been by that little taste of listening to those international leaders. They are encouraged, Nancy, because Kristen wrote this in the comments. While our world appears to be in global chaos, God is using Revive Our Hearts for global ministry. What an encouraging family chat this is. Ah, yes. I resonate. And, you know, it's not just that it's this global broad ministry, um, Nancy, lots of ministries have broad impact, but not all of them have deep life changing impact. And you recently shared just, I think my favorite story of 2020 with me recently. Can we share that? 
You're talking about Graciela. I am. And oh man, this is so precious. I hope I can um, tell it that she was one of over 6,000 women who attended the A True Woman Conference in Mexico in March, just before the, the continent closed down because of COVID. And she traveled to Mexico from Ecuador with a large group of women, a woman had invited her to come, said, you've got to come to this. And Graciela was not a believer. She had said she had no idea who any of the speakers were or why she was there, but she just went. And actually, Robert and I had a chance to meet her briefly. And we met many, many women that week. But um, recently, somebody sent me this picture with uh, a picture of her and us with this story. Uh, after the conference, let me say, during the conference, God started moving in this woman's heart, softening her heart, opening her heart to the gospel. And she was in the birthing process of coming to know Jesus. And then COVID prevented several dozen of those women from being able to return back to their home countries for, it was several weeks, maybe two yeah. or three months. And Graciela was one of those women, the whole Ecuadorian uh, the group of women could not get back into Ecuador. So they were housed in homes in Mexico, uh, churches that hosted them and showed them hospitality. And the women in her group began discipling her because she was this new baby believer. She had just come to faith at the conference. And now she's in 24 seven lockdown in, Me in her, another, you know, away from her home country. So the women were discipling her. And so the world is shutting down, but Graciela's heart is opening up and God began to transform this woman's life. Well, the group of women from Ecuador were watching their services. They were in Mexico, locked down, but they were watching their live stream of their services of their church in Ecuador. So this woman who had just come to know Jesus began watching the services with them. She actually became a part of that congregation from Mexico, the church in Ecuador. And finally in June, this uh, group of women got home. They had a quarantine 14 days when they got back to Ecuador. And during that time, the pastor of this church visited Graciela, continued to disciple her. And sadly, shortly after she got back, um, was able to get out of quarantine and get back to her home, she contracted COVID and the Lord took her home to heaven. And um, we first heard about this because the pastor contacted Laura Gonzalez, who's the director of our Latin, uh, of our Spanish speaking ministry. And this pastor just talked about the, what God had done in this woman's life, how amazing it was and how she had been witnessing to her family, praying for her unsaved family, praying that they would come to know Jesus at the funeral. And when the pastor sent this voicemail message, he was pretty emotional because he had seen what God had done in this woman's heart. And he, he contacted Laura to say thank you to Aviva Nuestros Corazones, Revive Our Hearts in Spanish, for the work that God was doing through that ministry, helping women like Graciela, who now is in heaven in the presence of the Lord. And so just a sweet reminder that the message, that, that eternity matters. And that, you know, in a year where we're talking about hundreds of thousands of deaths, um, we need a theology, a gentle, warm-hearted, biblical theology of dying and helping people to be prepared, whether it's through COVID or whatever means, 100% of us are going to die. And God used this ministry in a way we never could have imagined. It's so beautiful. You know, um, she, her last days were spent sharing Jesus with her daughters, with her family. You might pray for them that the Lord would continue to work in their hearts and their lives. You know, it, that story just illustrates that it's not just broad reach, it's deep reach, it's eternal impact, it's heart change reach. And Nancy, while we're talking about that, I think we really have to mention our passion that you and I both share for the generations of women coming up behind us. Yeah, we got to go. reach back to um, the, the generation and we're the generations that are younger than we are and increasingly that's most women and we're doing that in several ways and one that I'm I'll just mention here and we won't focus on it but just a time an opportunity to mentor and invest in younger women uh, who have a heart for ministry who love God's word who have gifts for teaching and discipling younger voices that are going to be teach the teachers of the word to women in the in the next generation so a year ago this time we uh, spent Dana and Mary Cassian and I spent a week and Aaron Davis 
uh, investing in these women, discipling them. It was a precious time. I, um, and you can see the picture there of these women. They were just full of life and vibrant and hopeful. And I love what God is doing through many of those women who long after I'm in heaven, and you too, Dana, most likely, yeah. those yeah. are going to be coming behind us to be the um, women's ministry leaders and teachers of the word in the next generation. And then there's another area that's really important to us as an even younger segment, and that's our teenagers or yeah. women, as we like to call them. And Dana, I know you've been talking with the team about that. So give us a sense yeah. of what's going on in that area. Well, of course, in 2008, you and I partnered for the first time to write Lies Young Women Believe because, you know, a decade and a few years ago, it was a really hard place that the, the world was not a Christian world anymore. And it's only gotten worse for these teenagers to grow up and for their faith to navigate through those teen and college age years, they need to be anchored in truth. And what we're realizing right now is that we really need a video presence to reach this age group, a stronger video presence. We have a little, not a lot. And so we're working on developing partnerships with even some of those women in the sisters in ministry group. They're young, strong communicators that love God's word. We're also been offering things like the Lies Young Women Believe online Bible studies for teenagers. We've done that through my ministry, True Girl. And I have to say, Nancy, this is where I'm so grateful for Revive Our Hearts. You have, um, Revive Our Hearts is such a support to so many other smaller ministries like mine. We were able to register about 600 mom-daughter sets for the six weeks of um, steady promotion through our True Girl channels, but Revive Our Hearts sent one email, and that day we got 356 registrations. We ended up with roughly 2,000 moms and daughters in this six-week study, and so I just want to say thank you to you, not just on behalf of my ministry, but all of the small ministries that are lifted up through Nancy's um, wisely but generously sharing the platform of Revive Our Hearts. When you support Revive Our Hearts, you're supporting ministries like mine. You're making those ministries possible too. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Dan. And one more thing, I know you have a passion for it and I wanna mention it before we move on just for a moment here. But when we think of passing on truth to the next generation, it's not just teen girls. We need to start when they're really young, don't we? Yeah, we do. And that's been the passion of my heart since 2003. When I was ministering to teens, I was like, Lord, let me graduate and minister to women. And he said, how about my little women? And since then, I've been ministering to girls under the age of 12. And the Lord showed me some really interesting stats. What we believe by our 13th birthday is for the most part, what we die believing. Our beliefs don't change dramatically. The Lord can do that. And we've seen him do that through the Revive Our Hearts ministry. But it's so important that we get girls in their Bibles before their 13th birthday. When we were writing the Lies Girls Believe book, I was alarmed at the number of our moms. 70% of them said their daughter was not reading her Bible on a regular basis, or those moms didn't know if their daughter was. Only 30% of our moms knew that their daughter was in fact developing, cultivating a daily devotional habit. So um, we've been working on products through True Girl to provide that to moms. We have a new True Girl subscription to deliver discipleship to tools like daily devos. In fact, we mentioned Ruth a while ago. Um, when Revive Our Hearts releases Ruth, we're going to be releasing a Ruth Bible study for girls under the age of 12. Now, how does the Revive Our Hearts True Girl Partnership really work together? Well, I want to tell you something really cool. It gives, first of all, us a platform to tell grandmas and moms that True Girl exists. So we want to bring moms and daughters closer to each other in Jesus. But yesterday we had a really neat testimony that just shows how it exists. A mom named Danita, who has a daughter named Deja, who's 12 years old. Well, her grandma is a Revive Our Hearts listener. Deja's grandma and Danita's mom is a Revive Our Hearts listener and bought Lies Girls Believe for her daughter so that she could take her granddaughter through it. Well, she also invited Dan Danita to listen to Revive Our Hearts and check out True Girl. And I'm happy to say Danita loves both of them, but this is how yesterday worked. Danita woke up and saying, I should probably listen to my mom's advice and check out True Girl. But before she did, she prayed because she's been having some financial difficulties through 2020. 
She was asking the Lord for provision for simple Christmas gifts and provision for discipling Deja biblically. And it just happened. It didn't just happen. The Lord directed her that at nine o'clock yesterday morning, she got on the True Girl Facebook page when we were doing our first giveaway for a Tuesday live stream. We gave away a grand prize for Giving Tuesday. And she wrote to us right after she entered the contest. And she said this, it's been a rough time the past couple of years financially, even having to borrow from my daughter's piggy bank. Deja has had a challenging year adjusting to distance learning during the pandemic and has felt so overwhelmed. And I've had health issues this past year. I feel that the True Girl, Girl tools are gonna help us connect after this hard year. It's gonna increase our bond to each other and Christ. She was already excited just as she met True Girl. But she said, here's the cool thing. Deja's grandmother is also instrumental in her life as far as developing her spiritual growth and is involved with teaching her the Bible. We decided to study lies girls believe in the new year as a family, mother, grandmother, and daughter. And here's the cool thing. At the end of the day, randomly selected winner of our grand prize that was a whole pack of Christmas gifts for a mom to wrap up for her teenage daughter, Danita won that gift. The Lord heard her prayer that said, Lord, give me gifts to wrap for my daughter in this hard financial year and let them be discipleship tools. Isn't that amazing? I love that, Dana. And one of the things I really love about that is the role of a praying grandmother and a grandmother investing in the life of her daughter and granddaughter. And you have had in your own family, just I want you to share it real quickly, an encouragement because we've got some grandparents and parents listening who whose children are not interested in the Lord, not walking with the Lord, but just uh, the, how you've seen God work in one of your own children as a result of a praying grandparent. Well, when Autumn, my daughter was 14, we met her for the first time and adopted her. That's a story for a different day. But she lived in China in a really godless surrounding. Autumn was worshiping idols as she grew up and was a young girl. But a few years after she came to be with us, and she was softening to the gospel. She came to know the Lord. And then she told us this, you know, in all the people that showed me all the wrong things, I'm remembering now that I had a grandmother who talked to me about Jesus and prayed for me all the time. You know what? I know that that grandmother, if, if we get to look down from heaven, probably looks down and sees that her prayers were answered. So I don't know what you're praying for, if it's a prodigal child or a grandchild that you're concerned about how their parents are raising them to love Christ, keep praying. God will be faithful to answer those prayers. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Dana, for loving these young women, these little girls, these teen girls and their moms, and just for how you're investing in them. And, in them. and it's a joy to be partnering with you in uh, reaching those women. Well, uh, we're, I want to move on here because we've just got a few minutes left, but I want to, I want you to meet Martin Jones, who's the executive director of Revive Our Hearts. And uh, Martin is just a faithful and godly and wise leader. So grateful for you, Martin. And, uh, you know, we're coming to the end of the year, which is a really important time for our ministry in terms of God's provision to enable all this stuff to be possible. So I, I want to just throw a few questions at you and have you share. Uh, first of all, just people have been wondering, how has the provision been during this year of COVID? What's it been like um, in terms of the Lord providing for the ministry? We all wondered that, I think, for our churches and the various ministries that we're involved in. And the short of that answer is God has provided for us. We've met our budget every month. We really worked hard to reduce expenses and control those things, but God's provided faithfully. And we've met that budget every month of 2020. And now as we come into the last month of the year. And this last month of the year is always so <laughs> important because yeah. um, this is when we see the provision of a huge percentage of the annual budget. Just give us a yeah. sense the need is as we come into the end of the year and then I want you to just share about for some this is that they've heard this before but some of you about the matching challenge the Lord has provided sure. yeah about 40 percent of the donations that Revive Our Hearts receives for the entire year comes in the month of December and as the ministry has grown over the past decade and a half and more um, that has stayed pretty consistent just about every year it's right in that range and so we don't spend money we don't have we say that to ourselves and those that support us oftentimes, we look to see what God provides. And so how December shapes up really does impact 2021 
because then we respond to what God gives us during that month. So our goal for the month of December is $2.2 million. That's about 40% of our donation budget for the year. And almost half of that has been provided as a matching challenge up front. So as different people engage, as donors and friends of the ministry engage during December, those gifts will be matched up to just a little over a million dollars. So that's what we're trusting God for and asking him for in the month of December. And we're already thanking him in advance for what he'll give us because we know he will give us what we need. And that project started yesterday, December 1st, right. which also was Giving Tuesday. Uh, and give us a report on uh, the how the how we got off to a start on our year and project yesterday. Yeah, we set a goal that for us was a stretch. We were praying and asking God to provide $50,000 that would then be matched by a $50,000 matching gift for that day. So $100,000. And we came in at 92,000. So 92% of that was met yesterday. And we also have a friend of the ministry that contacted you, Nancy, just a couple of days ago and shared such a sweet story and pledged that they want to give $100,000 a month of December. So we put those two things together. That gets us almost 15% of the way toward that whole goal and really gets us off to a great start here in these first two days of the month. And one of the things I love about what goes on through the, let me just, before I say that, let me just stop and say, praise the Lord. Yeah. What a great encouragement and a great way to start the month. Uh, one of the things I love about these December, these year ends, is how many people join in and partner with us in meeting that need. So um, you're the numbers man. Tell us what typically how many people we might have involved in the year end project. Yeah, most of the last two or three years, it's been seven to nine, seven to nine thousand people have engaged and given a gift in the month of December. So it's a lot of people participating. It isn't the size of the gift; it's the participation. And a lot of those are first time giving. Yeah. We're going to give monthly. We have many monthly partners on our mm -hmm. on this uh, event tonight. But for some, it's their first time partnering. Right. So um, over the next several weeks, you'll be hearing more about this. And I just want to say in advance, one, we want to thank the Lord for what he's going to provide mm -hmm. over these next weeks. But thank you for praying for um, the fact that you're on this call tonight says that you have a heart for this message for this mission and um thank you for praying that the lord will provide and as the lord prompts for giving so that we'll be able to continue doing all the kinds of things you're hearing about and more in the year ahead so thank you martin for your your wise and godly leadership so so grateful for you and then i want to just take a moment I, we want have one more person you want we want you to hear from before we close tonight. But first, I just want to take, as we said, we went earlier, a few minutes to soak in the word of God. And a few weeks ago, um, Dana jumped on a Zoom call with our international ambassadors, and we asked them to read a, a number of verses from the scripture in their own languages. And they, we put together a little video that's just a couple minutes. Uh, but I want you to listen carefully to this scripture. So hear it in English first and then in multiple uh, languages where we are ministering. But I want you to listen and realize that these verses represent the mission, the heartbeat, the passion of what we are doing through Revive Hearts, why we're doing what we're doing. So listen as these women read the word of God to us. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Proclamad entre las naciones su gloria, en todos los pueblos sus maravillas. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Jehovah Raja The Heer regeert. Rabbu Qad Malak. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Que Dieu nous fasse grâce et nous bénisse, qu'il fasse briller son visage sur nous. That your way may be known, your saving power among all nations. Dass man auf der Erde erkennen deinen Weg, unter allen Nationen deine Hilfe. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you alone are holy. You will answer our love with me, Que tu nous mai tu es sfânt. For your righteous acts have been revealed. Perché i tuoi giudizi sono stati manifestati. Zirokorhoi odelani yeto aknun oshkar shodas. The Lord has bared his holy arm. 
in the sight of all the nations. The Heere het sy mag, sy heiligheid geopenbaar voor die oor van al die nasies. That all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. Dit jy te rin. Al omam jamia han raat jamia ha atraf al al khala sa ilahi. Makikita ng lahat na wakas ng lupa ang pagliligtas ng ating Diyos. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Links ng kites, irte giyada is jokes ma. For you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Merte igasyag ay itila do ni ipaket, ishta igas katutanam sa teket at fulden. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Was we shy to the road of Slavio, was sick to the night to the Sayo. Seus feitos maravilhosos entre todos os povos. Wow, I love those passages. And from the time I was a little girl, that is what has captured and stirred my heart. That's what gets me up in the morning. It's not just preparing new messages. It's not running an organization. It's not writing books. It's not um, getting to interact with, you know, these wonderful women that we hear from. It's not accomplishing something great or building a big ministry. It's the concept of the glory of the Lord covering the earth as the waters cover the sea and the nations bowing before Christ as Lord. We've seen nations out of control this year, maybe as never before in our lifetime. But that's why I keep going back to God's word. And it reminds me that revival of our hearts really is critical because when we go back to Psalm 67, those first two verses, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us. That's the starting place of revival. God speaking to us, God making himself known to us. God, that's what Christmas is about. God causing his face to shine upon us in the person of Jesus Christ. But to what end? So that your ways may be known upon earth, your saving health among all the nations. All the nations, all the nations not just the United States of America, but all the world to come and bow before Christ. And then that third verse of Psalm 67, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Listen, what you just heard is, isn't that, you know, feel like it's a little glimpse of what we're going to see and experience in heaven? Not too long from now. Heaven rules. And when we are there with the Lord in his presence, we're going to have all men and women, young people, older people from every tribe and language and nation, bowing before the throne, worshiping him, adoring him, magnifying him, giving glory and praise to him. So what we're doing matters. What you're doing in helping to support this ministry matters. This is not for us, not to us, oh Lord, not to us but to you be the glory. And I can remember as a little girl, just longing that the glory of the Lord would be known to the nations of the world, never imagining that someday I would get to be a part of a ministry that God is using in different ways to touch women in all parts of the world. So thank you for being a part of that. And as we uh, come to the end tonight, I wanna to introduce a longtime friend, a really good friend of this ministry, Ed Cannon. Ed and his wife, Mary Jean, have been precious friends to me and to this ministry. Ed is the CEO and president of the Far Eastern Broadcasting Company. He knows, and usually when you talk to Ed, or he's just come back from, not during COVID so much, but from, from some other part of the world, from Vietnam or Thailand or the Philippines. And he is a, has a first row seat to what God is doing around the world. And Ed, as you've been listening tonight, you're in California. We were actually on the freeway when we got started here. I hope you made it home uh, safely. But um, just as you've been hearing what we're talking about tonight, what's been What's touching you? Just give us, a, a, make any observations you'd like, and then I'm going to invite you in just a moment to close us, to close our time in prayer. Sure. 
Well, it's a real honor to be here tonight with you, Nancy. And I couldn't be more privileged to have spent all those years that you talked about working closely with the ministry of Revive Our Hearts. And I can remember in the early days when even the true woman conferences were just beginning and we had to pray that we would have enough people attending the conferences. And now look, thousands of women attending, and not just in the United States, but all over the world, as your ministry is truly growing into an international ministry. Uh, beyond that, you know, the stories we hear tonight are tremendous, wonderful testimonies of how Nancy's faithfulness to God's word have transformed the lives of many, many women. But being on the inside, I can assure you, it's more than just the kinds of stories you're hearing. It's a marathon. It's year after year after year of steady growth, which can only be the result of faithful obedience to God's command to go ye therefore and proclaim the gospel to women all around the world. And we've been very faithful to that. You know, Nancy, I'm also very grateful that you've put my good friend Martin Jones on the call tonight, because having served on your advisory board for more years than I can really remember, uh, I have seen from the inside of the ministry of ROH how effectively it's managed and run. I've had the experience over the 20 years I've been in ministry to be uh, inside many, many ministries and churches and see how effectively they run and how they're stewards of God's resources. None finer than ROH, the way they're managed effectively, efficiently. Every dollar is carefully scrutinized and used. And I know that's not the exciting part of the ministry, but it's really important as we have many choices of what we can do to support. I, I, I honestly believe there's no ministry anywhere that's run better than Revive Our Hearts. And the effectiveness here, especially in the United States over the decades, uh, Nancy, has just been phenomenal. But what I have the opportunity to see is the need for women to hear the true message of the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Uh, I work in countries where uh, not only are women marginalized, they're excluded, they're treated as second-class citizens. And what we see is an unbelievable opportunity to free them from the bonds of this life and, of course, free them from the bonds of sin through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I couldn't be more excited than to hear this women's ministry of true woman revive our hearts now uh, grounded and all these other exciting ministries you're doing with a focus on international because literally there are billions of women who desperately need the message that really I feel no one can deliver better than Revive Our Heart. So I'm just very grateful, uh, Dana, Nancy, Martin, Elise, Janie, the whole team on, on the wonderful work you're doing. And it's been a privilege to serve with you. What a wonderful night. I'm so grateful that you've had uh, this gathering of people so they can share a little bit on the inside, get a little bit of taste of the holiday season too, as we're beginning to come up on the Christmas season. And now if you'd like, Nancy, could I close this in a word of prayer? Yeah, thank you, Ed. Father, we're just so uh, thankful tonight for the faithfulness of Revive Our Hearts over these some 20 years. And Lord, not only for the faithfulness of Nancy and Dana and the, and the broadcasters and the voices, but the staff, the many people behind the scenes who add up the numbers, who make sure the programs are edited, make sure they're going out at the right time, who have the vision to take the ministry to places like uh, Latin America and Spain and, and now to Iran, I hear tonight, and to Turkey and to places in the Middle East, Lord, and create this vision for the future. And Lord, we're also so grateful for the many partners like those who have joined us on the call tonight, uh, without whose sacrificial giving to this ministry, we could never have accomplished the things that you would have done through the ministry of Revive Our Hearts. And Lord, as we look forward to a new year, uh, help us to remember the lessons we've learned from this past year. What is it that you've taught us by asking us to sit quietly and listen to your heart, to your words, to your messages, so that in the year 2021 and beyond, Revive Our Hearts can be a more effective, expanding, growing ministry with the single purpose, Lord, of speaking to the hearts of women all around the globe with the only message, Lord, 
that can bring them out of the desperation of sin. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, as one of the verses we heard tonight, until all on earth have seen the salvation of God, we pray that you'll keep this ministry going forward. Mm -hmm. Keep your hand of blessing and encouragement on Nancy and the entire team. And Lord, we just lift this all up in the name of your son, our precious Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Ed. That was powerful. You got me revved up to keep doing what we're doing. And Nancy, I know we've gone a few minutes over time, but people don't seem to mind. The comments are amazing. Jessica wrote, absolutely fantastic. Our God is good, good, good. He's on the move. We're so blessed. And Margot wrote, this is so encouraging. Praise God. All glory to God. He's amazing. He's working no matter if we see it or not. Amazing. And I think that's how we feel. And I, I sure wish we could be together physically, but it's so good that we could come together online. I want to say thank you for choosing to spend your evening with us and for your faithful partnership. Nancy, how do we even end a night as sweet as this? Well, it has been sweet. And I want to end by us giving a musical gift to you but and a blessing. But let me introduce it this way. As I think back to the story of that Iranian woman that Sabrina shared a bit ago, uh, who's a member of the underground church. Uh, one, I'm just so thankful for the way the Lord has used this ministry to give grace to that precious woman and to so many others like her around the world. And all of that possible because of your generosity, your prayers. So thank you for your support throughout this, this difficult year and for your support and prayers during this month as we trust the Lord to meet these year-end needs. But here's a woman, this woman in Iran, who has found peace and joy in the midst of isolation, persecution, and horrendously difficult circumstances. And I loved when she said that she had purpose to boldly look up and courageously look ahead. She said she knows she is not alone because Jesus is with her. I wanna just say to you, I, I wish I could just sit there and look into your face and I would like to say to you, whatever you may be facing here at the end of this year and whatever you may face ahead in 2021, I want you to know you are not alone. We are not alone. Our God is with us forever and ever. We are never alone. Our God is with us now. So as we close, we're just going to play the audio of a song that is ministered to me and to our team through this crazy year of COVID and cancer for us. And if you can hang around for two minutes, I want you to just let this song and its lyrics wash over your soul and minister to you with the reminder that our God is with us now. And with that, I'll say to you, good night and blessings on you. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God is with us, we are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God is with us, we are not alone.